Well, I think that you just said it. Um, practice, practice doesn't take us away from the existential truths of birth, old age, sickness, and death. It doesn't take us away from the cultural pain of racism and gender and, you know, all those questions related to our social identities. It doesn't mean that war isn't going to break out. It doesn't mean that systems of government aren't going to collapse. And it doesn't mean that the natural world isn't going to change. The natural world has changed, as you know, throughout the history of the planet and the universe. Change is an absolute, utter constant. So it's everything you're saying is utterly true. And the Buddhist tradition actually acknowledges that and recognizes that. And, and then basically in the Zen tradition, a question so profound as the one that you're asking yourself, because a koan is a question that you pose to yourself. You know, that's a question to be lived. An answer is not what we're going for. We're going for what is the practice in the middle? What is the stability of practice in the middle of just untold turbulence? In, in the mind or in the relationships or in the culture or in the natural world? What is this practice under these conditions? That is the question. And I think you, you formulated it very well. It's also my question. And in some ways, it's the one place where I feel like I can experience what Miles described is that apart from all the change and the unknowns and the media and the debate and all of that, that there's something very important and true that seems to be inherent to my own being and to the being of others and to this. And what we know is it's always right now. It's not the past. It's not the future. It's always um, when the mind is relaxed and the heart is open. It's always responsive with compassion. And there seems to be inherent wisdom that is different than that of the thinking mind. So it's the only true refuge that I've ever found is practice. Miles, do you want to have yeah. anything to add? I mean, Howard, I certainly resonate with your 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 question. I mean, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't add anything about the uh, the dilemmas that we find ourselves in these today. You know, it seems like the world the world it seems like the problems where that the world is going through today. I'm sure it was always like that, but they, they seem to be more complex than ever. And you know, I don't want to pretend to any expertise on that, other than an intense interest. But from a Dhamma point of view, um, there is no security. There is no stability. Utterly, absolutely. And that's an absolute truth. First noble truth, Dukkha Secha, the truth of unsatisfactoriness. There is no stability. There is no security. Uh, Diane always says, or I'm not sure where you got it from, but uh, what is it? Fear of falling? Until you realize there's no bottom or something. Oh, like Trungpa, that. Trungpa Rinpoche. He said, uh, he said, there's the good news and the bad news, and the the bad news is you're in a we're in a free fall, and the good news is there's no bottom. <laughs> Says, yeah, it's going to hell in a handbasket. It's it's it sucks, and the good news is, it all it always was like that. It's always going to go that way. For us identified human beings, this is a big problem, and indeed we should act and work and 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 inquire and try to find the best way to move or you know move things forward um, but at the same time if we don't first rest in that absolute truth you know that there is no security it's yeah by all means have insurance have a house have have as get as much security as you can but fundamentally it is so fragile oh my god i mean life has taught me that again and again and again but just being in war here, even though I can't really complain that, you know, it's much worse for others not far away from here, much worse. But, um, oh, my God, no, there there is no security. It is all so incredibly fragile. And yet, where can we go? The Dhamma is constant. The Dhamma is 
the Dhamma is always changing, but the absolute truths are unshakable. Always were, always are, and always will be. Having that perspective, whether it's just a small taste or even an understanding or even a deeper realization and entering into the, the complexity of the relative world where things are going to hell in a handbasket, that creates a new dialectic. And the dialectic, we are relative being, we are relative humans with natural, or sorry, with, um, with absolute spirit. That dialectic evolves. That dialectic grows. Whatever answered, with that koan, a dialectic is a koan, um, whatever solution there is, we're going to live into the solution sooner or later. 